What is up everybody? Welcome back to Mount Mograph. As always, my name's Matt and in today's video we have a super cool uh, little technique that we're going to go over. It is called the Insane Frank Miller Renders. Uh, as dumb as the name is, the technique is awesome. If you don't know who Frank Miller is, he's this incredibly famous comic book artist whose style is very distinct. It focuses on negatives, white and black, the use of space, um, and kind of leaves a lot of it up to the user to, or not the user, the viewer to see what they're actually seeing. So, uh, if you don't know who he is, he's done Sin City, he's done Batman, he's done The Spirit, a uh, horrible movie, uh, and tons and tons of other ones. But as you can see, it's a lot of this kind of negative look. Uh, so he does all his illustrations, hand-drawn, uh, incredibly talented, like I say, and takes tons and tons of time to do them, I'm sure. And it all has these little details. So we're going to go ahead and mimic this Frank Miller style inside Cinema 4D and put together a really cool little rig to really control all of the parts of the scene. So as you can see here, here's just a little example of this um, head, but we kind of have that Frank Miller style, and we're gonna go over a couple ways to achieve this effect, also with animation. So let's go ahead and create a new project here, and just start by putting some object in the scene. You're not gonna want like a primitive, like a square. If you can, uh, go on into your sculpting um, folder and just grab something. So why don't we work with a Velociraptor because that is super cool. And I'm actually going to scale this up a touch and uh, check him out. He is pretty sweet. So we're gonna work with this today. Um, we're not gonna do the whole sculpting or anything like that. We'll just work with something that already exists to keep things nice and easy. But I'm gonna show you all the render options and how to set up this really cool light rig to get this Frank Miller style. So first things first, why don't we go ahead and delete our material in our project and also on our Velociraptor. Seems silly at first, but I promise this is what we want. And hop into our render options and we're gonna change a couple things. So by default, I always have ambient and occlusion on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, go up into my anti-aliasing and turn my uh, level to best and my minimum level to uh, four by four, maximum level to eight by eight. So this doesn't really matter that much. I just like to keep uh, with this effect things really, really sharp. So anti-aliasing really fixes that and it still will render super quick. So no worries at all with uh, cranking those settings up. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with this scene. So I'm gonna do command R to preview this and you're gonna see we indeed have a Velociraptor. It looks super bad. So obviously we're gonna wanna add lights and the way we're gonna add lights is to get this Frank Miller style. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is select all of the objects. Um, as you can see, mine are nested. If yours aren't nested, just select them all, um, or wait a second, and we're gonna connect them all and delete them. So this is now just a single object. It's not all these little objects. And we can go and position him around the scene or just check him out. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this little dude Dino, um, or Dion, that's actually even better. I may as well add an E and roll with it. So <laughs> Dion, the Velociraptor, um, is about to get the Frank Miller render style. Um, and I called it insane because it, it really is so cool once you see the power of uh, what we're gonna do. So this was a happy accident. Let's go ahead and add a light to the scene. So earlier this week, I was playing around with rendering and uh, I ended up accidentally cranking up one of my lights to just an insane level and I started to get these really nutty um, blowout lines as you can see. Um, so even like that, we kind of are starting to get that Frank Miller style and this is what gave me the idea to start. Uh, so I promise there's more to this video than just, oh yeah, we're gonna turn our light up to 2000 um, and there you go. Uh, it will have a lot of fun with it. So as you can see, when I move this around the scene, we're starting to get this really interesting way to view objects. And it looks like a 2D thing. Someone could have drawn this and they would have been really talented, uh, but obviously we're not doing that. We're just doing 3D and, and it looks cool. So as I was playing with this, I realized that, you know, we don't have that much control over the shadow other than where you position your light. So in order to get that Frank Miller style that we talked about, who really focuses on like the smaller details and really getting into um, specific things um, on these characters, uh, I realized that, like that's really important. We got we to gotta hit up those uh, shadows. So let's go ahead and create a little rig. And I'm going to show you just how fun and powerful this little rig is by using something called user data. Uh, so let's name this first light, um, light, I guess. And we're going to go ahead and just duplicate the light. And I'm going to call this dark. So um, 
what you'd think is that we would just go ahead and switch the color of our light to black and we would be in good shape. But as you can see, this is doing um, less than nothing in the scene. Um, it's tiring out my finger and nothing is changing on Dion. Uh, so that obviously doesn't work. So let's go ahead and set our color back to zero. And actually, we're going to do something that Dumbledore does uh, from those movies where he kind of steals light. Uh, we're going to go ahead and steal the light. So if we set our intensity down to like negative 1,500, we're actually going to be taking that color from the scene, uh, which is super interesting. So this gives you a ton of control over where your shadows are on Dion. We can go ahead and, and take away shadows. We can duplicate this and really focus on those small details, like I said, while also going in and duplicating the light and repicking up details. Uh, so what you can do with this whole thing is, and also if you crank up your dark settings or your light settings, you can take away more. So as you can see, just like that, I'm already starting to have an incredible amount of control over the details of our little model. So let's go ahead and make this even easier to work with by creating a little user data rig. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the light and dark copies and just keep the original too. Um, it's always best to have the originals. And we're gonna select them both and put them into a new null, Alt-G on your keyboard. So I'm gonna call this the um, Frank Miller Render Rig. Ooh, that just flows off the tongue, perfect. And let's click either the light or the dark um, lights and go into the option called project right here. We're gonna right click our objects and go down to user data and say copy user data interface. And click back up into your Frank Miller render rig and in your null object in the top here, click user data and go down to add user data. We're gonna first delete this little thing called data and we're gonna make our own group because we wanna name this something cool like the Frank Miller uh, render options. That's actually not cool at all. I'm sorry about that. Um, and I actually just put some <laughs> nutty little slash in there and I, I canceled out. So I'm gonna go into manage user data um, click my Frank Miller render options, right click and say paste. And you're gonna see that the object thing we copied is now right here. So that's all we're gonna have to do. We'll keep it nice and easy and I'm gonna say okay. So what we've done is basically set up something that will be able to control these two options just from our null. So when we have tons of lights, we don't have to worry about going and switching every option. So uh, let's go make this a driver. We're gonna right click it, go down to user interface, or sorry, expressions and say set driver. And then we're gonna highlight both the light and dark lights and click the object here right click and go down to expressions set driven absolute um, we want that to change explicitly um, so there we go we're all set up and I'm gonna also while I'm there change my mode to include so we're only going to be able to grab the objects and I can minimize this only gonna be able to grab the objects that are in our Frank Miller render option so I'm gonna drop Dion into there and you're gonna see that all of a sudden he's lit up like a Christmas tree or uh, a Frank Miller Christmas tree dinosaur uh, I don't know where that was going so uh, now we can go ahead and just duplicate um, these lights and drag them around and start to pick up all kinds of cool details on Dion and why we set up this rig is because now we can duplicate Dion and we'll call this one Simone and we'll drag out Simone and you're going to see that Simone is has no lights at all on him or her. I don't know what Simone is, but uh, maybe I'll make him a little bit smaller. So that's kind of sad. Um, he's totally not in the scene. And if you want to have him join the scene, all you have to do is duplicate your Frank Miller render rig, drag it out here. And then what we're going to do is just undo um, Dion and we're gonna drop in Simone. And then we can go ahead and move our render rig over to uh, Simone. I'm losing track of the names. I probably shouldn't have picked something so crazy. And now we can only control him. So what we can do is build entire cities or towns or something like that and really nail all those little details by using this technique of building your little Frank Miller render rig. And it's super, super easy. So let's go ahead and do another cool thing. I'm going to delete everything except the Frank Miller, Frank Miller render rig. And we're going to go and just check out how you can use this technique with animation. So let's go and create a plane. You are going to need the simulation uh, suite. Uh, I think for cloth, it's pretty easy. Um, but most versions have it. I think that our studio for Cinema 4D. Uh, and we're going to make our width and height seg segments to 100 here, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and press C on our keyboard to make this object editable, editable, not editable, and go into your right view 
go into your point selection mode, switch your mode to rectangle selection. We're gonna right click our plane object and go down to simulation tags and click the cloth tag. Then we're gonna go over to the dresser and we're gonna say uh, dress mode, we're gonna check that. And then we're gonna go ahead and just select the top little bunch of points there. So just that top row. We're go going to go under fixed points and click set and it's gonna turn purple if you did it right. If not, you probably did something wrong. So let's go out of the dress mode here and you're gonna notice our tag is in gray and it's gonna to switch to blue when we click this. So let's do that. And we have a nice blue little plane. I'm gonna go back into my perspective view here and I'm gonna press play on my uh, timeline and you're gonna see that we have this wonderful uh, cloth in our scene. Um, and so, why did we do this? Well, first off, we're gonna have to drop our plane. I'm gonna actually name this nice cloth. We're gonna have to drop that into our Frank Miller render rig because it's in our objects here. So I'm gonna drop the cloth in there and you're gonna see we're already starting to pick up those cool cloth details. So why don't we move this rig over? It was sized up for those dinosaurs. And I'm gonna click my display to garage shading so we can really see what's going on. And you're gonna see we're starting to get, um, once again, a really cool, um, comic booky style. I'm actually gonna go into my uh, timeline and switch this to 10 seconds so we have a little bit longer to, bit to work with. Go into my cloth tag here and go to my cache and just say cache mode, click that and say calculate it. Sure, um, wait for this a second just so I can scrub the timeline and not have to worry about uh, having it having play from the beginning every time. So uh, now I can go ahead and just scrub this and see see what the heck's going on with this um, cool cloth. So uh, I did this to show that you can actually take this um, cloth and it's animated, it's all simulated, and this would be a nightmare um, to illustrate. Uh, but as you can see, even with this render, um, just on the without even playing around with the lights, you're starting to get that style. So let's go into our rig and play around a little bit to try to um, bring out a bit more of this cloth. Um, maybe move that over, uh, duplicate this and drag that over. I might turn up my darkness um, a lot, so I'll do this. It's gonna look different in the viewport and when I render it, it should look completely different. And then I might want to duplicate my light and just drag this down over here uh, maybe. And let's see, maybe turn my general down a lot. Um, and we just wanna pick up more of the details. So now what I can do is kinda of create that Batman cape or something like that, really, really easy. Um, it's not finding a good spot yet. Well, as you can kinda of see in the details, um, you can get that Batman cape look or whatever you want, super easy, um, just by using this little rig we just made. And you can also go ahead and render this out and uh, I think I did a render. Um, no, I did not do a render. Well, you can render this out if you spend a little bit more time with the light rig and you can just start to get these really cool comic style illustrations. Uh, so anyway, that was uh, it for today. We covered the Frank Miller illustration style. I think it was kind of fun. We met Dion and Simone and all that. And um, yeah, I hope you have fun with this technique and uh, that's about it. Catch you guys later. Thanks for checking out Mount MoGraph. Like, subscribe, give a high five.